Cody Gakpo has been linked heavily with a move to Manchester United. But the big question is, can he or how will he fit into Manchester United's team? Let's have a tactical look at whether he can be a success at Manchester United. Jay here from Stratford Paddock, and this is a bit of tactical yes. analysis with my good friend, Joe Smith. We're going to be talking about Cody Gakpo. Mm. Now, I'm sure everyone is aware he has been linked with a move to Manchester United since the summer, and those rumours, those reports, those stories have gathered even more momentum as the World Cup's gone on. Mm -hmm. He's having a good time of it over yep. in Qatar. We've seen various stories saying that Manchester United are almost there in mm. terms of a deal being made for the PSV Eindhoven attacker. So we thought we'd have a look and see just how he could, or hopefully will, fit into the side at Manchester United. So you've been yeah. going over some of his goals, some of his assists, some of his general play, and working out just how he fit in under Eric Ten Hag's system. Yeah, basically, what kind of player is he? What does he bring, and what will he bring to Manchester United? Obviously, for those who don't know, 33 matches this season, 18 goals, 18 assists, 36 goal uh, contributions, obviously. More than a goal contribution per game. So basically, if he's playing, your team is 1-0 up before you even start, which yeah. is a sensational thing to have. I think in the uh, top 15 leagues uh, in the world this season, only uh, Haaland has got as many goal contributions as him, and no one has got more. They've got the same as each other. So if you think yeah. Haaland's been good this season, he's been involved in as many goals as Erling Haaland has, which obviously not in the same league, but that's just a, a testament to just how productive he's been this season, including three goals in four matches so far at the World Cup. We're going to be looking at exactly what he brings. And I think, and this is a, a characteristic and a, a, a tactic, or a, sorry, a part of a player's game that is often overlooked. But one thing he brings to Manchester United is versatility. And that's going to be a crucial part as we go through all of these uh, screenshots and, and the, these sort of uh, clips that we've got here today. So this, this is the first one against Senegal, a goal that he scores. Um, you can see him there just on the right-hand side of the screen. So firstly, we're seeing him as a right winger. We're yeah. seeing him out in that position there on the right-hand side. Interestingly enough, this is a, a little clip that involves Memphis, De Jong, um, and Cody Gakpo, obviously three players that have either played for or could possibly play yeah. for Manchester United in the near future, um, all linking together. So there's a chance that next season this happens at Manchester United. Is that Daily Blind on the end there? That well? is could Daily Blind. <laughs> that is Daily Blind there. Look. there couldn't we? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, we need his Rude Van Nistelrooy up front. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, we'll be laughing. I know, yeah, we're pretty much a, a whisker away from this being like every Man United fan's dream, this goal. Uh, but you see it start there, M uh, Memphis on the ball, De Jong a bit deeper. De Jong looking at the ball, but see, here's the thing here. So there's uh, Gakpo now making that run. Everyone else inside that box is stationary. You see, I think it's uh, Klass in there um, and uh, Dumfries, I believe, on that right-hand side as well. Staying still, you can see right there, uh, Gakpo is on the move and De Jong sees it immediately. Obviously, he's got that vision there where he is looking at everything that is going on. He sees the move, he sees the run from Gakpo and that's the thing, he's got a striker's instinct. Even if he doesn't necessarily have that sort of down the middle, number nine performance that you want to see from him week in, week out, he's someone that is looking for goals constantly, which is crucial. Go forward, up in the air, he gets the ball, he gets the head he sees. Uh, he's gone past um, the, the goalkeeper Mendy in net there, um, and he's scoring the goal, which is obviously exactly what you want from him. In the air, versatile, getting the ball in the back of the net, and he's scoring the goal there in the World Cup, which is obviously excellent. Now, the reason I bring that up is because if we move on to the next goal, we see him starting in a completely different position. This is him again in the centre of the pitch this time, playing more that number nine role, not coming in off the right-hand side. He's playing down the middle. And again, he's in a very tight area here. Um, you can see the ball gets laid off to him. Um, he, he sort of takes the ball onto his left foot this time. So we've seen the head already. Now onto his left foot, finds the space for himself, which is something that he's very good at doing. And then hitting an absolute rifle of a shot there. Left foot, loads of men around him. Ball straight into the back of the net, which obviously brilliant finish. Right foot, left foot header as well. Um, he can do pretty much everything. I think sometimes versatile or versatility is almost a stick to beat players with. And I think we've seen certain players at United struggle with that in the past. I think Martial is a good example where is he a left winger? Is he a number nine? Well, when we bring when we bring um, Sanchez in, he's now he's a striker to sort of move him out the way of that. When we bring Lukaku in, now he's a left winger to move him out the way of that. When we bring Zlatan in, oh, he's back on the left wing. Like, it feels like every he sort of gets pushed around 
almost in in the negative sense. Yeah. Whereas I think we can look at Gakpo as, as the positive version of that, where he's someone that genuinely can play in all three of those positions. He's getting better in that number nine role, and that's something that will hopefully only continue to improve. Because the crucial thing with Ten Hag is, Ten Hag likes players that can play a fluid style within his system. So he right. sets up rigid structures. He likes the person who is playing on the left wing to do this. He likes the person who's in the number nine to do this. He likes the person on the right to do this. But whoever fills those gaps, he doesn't mind. We saw that all the time at Ajax, yeah. that fluidity, people moving in and out, Ziyech on the left, Tadic on the right, this, that, and the other, all people moving around in those positions. As long as someone is doing each of the roles, he doesn't mind who is doing it. So imagine a front three of Rashford, Marshall, and Gakpo. All three of them can play in any three of those positions, can't they? Yeah. And I think that's I think that's what Ten Hag wants. This was the uh, the uh, Johan Cruyff Cup, which is essentially their sort so of this is their charity shield, yeah. right? their community shield. So this is between. So even though this is a glorified friendly, almost yeah, it is against decent opposition because you're playing Ajax, who obviously yeah. are the top team in Holland, and and this is looking at him not just. Scoring goals, but creating yeah. as well. Yeah, and now he's coming off the, the left-hand side. Right. So we've seen him coming off the right, yeah. breaking into the box. We've seen him coming down the centre, pushing into the box from there. And now this is the creative side of him off the left. Again, showing that versatility. That's something that, like I said, sometimes people use that as a, as a problem or a difficult thing or something that's like almost like a dig. I think in certain positions, it can be an issue. I think sometimes in midfield, it can be an issue where you're sort of all right at everything like the kind of Paul Pogba thing where you think, all right, can you play defensively? Not really. Can you play as a number 10? Not quite. Are you a sort of, you know, a number eight that can be relied on to do everything? Not really. He's amazing at everything, but he can't do one thing that well. Yeah. I think Gakpo and, and the forward line, especially under Ten Hag, having that versatility is actually a good thing as we play it on. Uh, whips the ball in. Great cross again against Ajax. Ball headed in uh, in the centre of the pitch and it's an assist. It's a game where he got um, two assists and one goal and he also hit the post as well. So it was a game that he basically just ran. They won 5-3 um, and it was Gus Till who got a hat-trick. But, you know, I think two of those goals came from assists from Gakpo again. We see almost the same thing here. Gakpo in the middle of the pitch there. Uh, ball played out to him onto that right-hand side. Almost the same goal again. Men overloading in the box. You see the Ajax defence trying to get back, but there's just too much going on. Um, Gakpo looking in the box, puts the ball in, and we see the same goal again. Ball headed in the back of the net. And that's showing that consistency. He's, he's only a young player, 23 years old, and this is something that he's adding to his game. He's gone from being someone that gets you sort of five to 10 goals a season, already we've got 18 goals a season. He's absolutely stepping it up massively. I mean, what's impressive as well about this is you look at it against different levels of opposition, because yeah. Qatar, awful, let's yeah. be honest, one of the worst teams in the World Cup ever. Um, <laughs> you sound like Donald Trump then, <laughs> awful, one of the worst. One well, of the worst they they the probably time. are, like, yeah, no, yeah, standard. They're, like, the, the, they're the only host nation to lose all three games. Exactly, I mean, yeah. and they're only in it because they're the host nation. Yeah. Like, no disrespect to them, but we have to be realistic about the levels. Yeah. But you, then you look at it and you think Senegal, again, not will beaters, but a decent team, Ecuador, similar, Ajax. A good yeah. team, yeah. and he's making them look average. OK, it's not the most competitive game, but it's still a game they want to win. It's yeah. still some form of a trophy at the end of it. And he's not just had a decent game, he's had a world, hasn't he? Yeah. So you can see there, obviously, despite the disparity in the, the levels of the opposition, he's causing problems, whoever's in front of him. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's something that's really impressive. And also, you can say, oh, he's only done it in the, in the Dutch league, but he is Dutch, he's come through in that league. He can't prove himself in a league he's never been in. No. I mean, what he is doing is proving it on every competition he plays in, whether that be the World Cup, whether that be the Dutch League. I think he's in the top 3% uh, for goals in the Europa League as well this season. So, you know, that's a, that's a competition that Man United and Barcelona are in. Yeah. It's not exactly the, the lowest standard in the world, and he's tearing it up there as well. Basically, he's, he's in that point of his career where you see a lot of players where they go from either being, well, he's, he's clearly gone from being a productive, decent player. Now it looks like he might be taking that step to being one of the most productive players in Europe. And if United can get him, while well, the fee, we're still looking, like, looking at like reports and tweets and this, that and the other. It's like 45, 50 well, million. I had it in my news earlier today, and the, the sort of, one of the stories was that United valued him at 40, PSV at 50. So obviously, yeah. even I can do those maths, there's a £10 million pound disparity between yeah. the, the gap between what the, the two clubs are at. But you think that's doable? Yeah. I mean, especially for a kid who, like you said, the thing that impressed me the most here is, is his versatility. He kept saying yeah. that word and the fact that he can play almost anywhere uh, uh, across the front three. Because there was a worry, is he just coming in? Is he another player that only can play on the left? Yeah. And that when Martial's fit, 
Rashford's on the left, Martial's in the middle, and but you're saying he could play anywhere. Yeah, and also it's it's that thing with Ten Hag as well, where yes, he's got his favourites. He'll always have you know his his sort of favoured front three. But because of the intensity, because of the physical demand that uh, his high pressing style uh, puts on these attackers. We're going to need rotation all the time. Yeah. You can't win a league. You can't win the Champions League anymore with three attackers, three midfielders, four defenders and a goalie. You have to have, certainly in those midfield and attacking areas, you need rotation pieces because it's too physically demanding. We've seen Anthony with injury. We've seen Sancho with illness and injury. Martial's barely played all season. You know, even if Cody Gakpo was behind all those players, he'd have still got 15 appearances for United this year because of that versatility and because of the fact that he can, you know, step in any time we need him. And let's, you know, imagine he improves and becomes the sort of player he looks like he could be. He might be taking all those spots off those players anyway. So for me, when you consider the price, when you consider he seems to be having this sort of coming of age season at PSV, he looks like the exact sort of player Man United need at the moment, especially now Cristiano Ronaldo's left. Good stuff. Certainly whetting my appetite for Cody Gakpo to come to Manchester United. He's spoken about Manchester United's interest as well. It's quite rare for a player to speak about it. And you get the impression that he's well up for a move. Hopefully the two clubs can agree a fee and make it happen. Make sure you are checking out the other videos as well that Joe referenced. You mentioned there one about Marcus Rashford. Yep. Don't forget as well, we have got the 12 Days of Paddock coming up. That is our sort of special offer that we do over Christmas, encouraging our members to, or people to join our membership where you can win a different pri prize over 12 days with the grand prize mm -hmm. of 500 quid to get involved in that. And also, on the 30th of December, we're going to be in Dublin for a live event. So come down, join me, Joe, Adam McCullough, Stephen Housen, and birthday boy, it's his birthday today, Brian McClare. So he's going to be joining us, an actual United legend. So get involved in that if you can. Joe, always a pleasure. Where can Thank people you find much. you? Check me out on Sloppy Joe's podcast. Uh, yeah, cheers for joining. Yeah, good stuff. You know how to find me, Jay Motti. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. This has been a tactical analysis of what Cody Gakpo could be doing at Old Trafford very soon. Thanks for watching.